four biggest college football games this week broken down for you with deep analysis, my proprietary power ratings, and free plays coming up for you in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV, and this is my weekly college football top 25 video, and put a little asterisk next to a top 26 video, because I'm going to give you a bonus fourth game that was just a bit outside from making the polls. That's coming up in a moment, but let's look at the three biggest matchups, and then that bonus game here for week number seven, I believe, right? I'm losing track here. We're over halfway through the college football season. And let's start off with the first game on the clock, and that is at 3.30 Eastern, and then the next two games are both 7.30 Eastern. We're going to look at number one, Texas, against number 18, Oklahoma. Of course, a neutral field here with the Cotton Bowl. Red, Red River rivalry, triple R's. Can't call it the shootout. Don't do that. It's the Red River rivalry now, and it's still always one of the biggest games of the season, definitely one of the biggest games each October. And to see a two-touchdown dog on a neutral field here, you kind of initially look at Oklahoma, right? Because it's a rival dog. They keep these series close normally. But my proprietary 10,000-game simulation, I'm going to give you my ratings for each of these games, has Texas winning on average by 14 points. So the points spread actually looks spot on in this one. That gets me looking more at the total in this. And I do think the under is worth a look. Now, we saw some sharp money push the under from 51.5 down to 50.5 this week. And unfortunately, it did cross over or under in this case that key number of 51. And by the way, 51 is a key total because so many games can land on that number. 31-20, 27-24, uh, 41-10. Just a lot of different margins get you there. So I do like it more at 51 or more, but the under would be my play here because I just don't trust this Oklahoma offense, which is struggling to move the ball this season. You know, Oklahoma has been all offense, no defense the past couple seasons. Now it's the reverse. They've actually got a pretty good defensive team, but their offense is struggling. In fact, Texas has been just fantastic defensively, so it's hard to imagine Oklahoma's going to have a lot of success moving the ball, especially through the air. They average just six yards per pass, and all the season they're averaging just 4.7 yards per play against teams that allow 5.0. Texas has given up just 3.8 on average. So Longhorn should be able to limit Oklahoma. Never looking to fade a rival dog, especially if two touchdowns, but my power ratings show this line to be spot on. And I am worried about Oklahoma having any backdoor cover potential. So I think the under, especially at 51 or more, is probably the safer play in this game at 3.30 Eastern on an ABC. All right, your next two matchups both go at 7.30 Eastern Saturday night. Biggest game of the week without doubt. One of the biggest games this season is number two, Ohio State, at number three, Oregon. That kicks off at 7.30 Eastern on NBC National TV. And once again, my proprietary database model thinks this line is spot on. Um, projection that three-point Ohio State win. So I'm going to look at the over-under here for your free play in a moment. By the way, I want to point out that the Circa in Las Vegas had advanced lines way back in June on these major matchups. And by the way, Texas was only an eight-point early favorite. Now it's 14. The look headline on this game um, was Ohio State as a slight one-point favorite. Now it's three. In fact, just last week, DraftKings headed at two. So the line is a little inflated now. Uh, but my model says it's spot on. It does look like a difficult scheduling spot or travel spot for Ohio State. In fact, uh, these Big Ten teams have struggled this season when traveling multiple time zones, so that's a concern. But I do factor that into the simulation. It's one of the many factors that goes into the 10,000 games. And on average, I've got Ohio State still coming up by three points because they do appear to be the better overall team this season. But one thing that's been consistent for both of these teams are strong offensive units, and that's why I think the total is the better approach once again in this game as well. But unlike the under in the Texas game, we're looking over here in the Ohio State-Oregon game, and the sharp money agrees. Uh, this line opened uh, much lower. In fact, it opened, as I checked the Wager Talk Live odd screen, around that key number of 51 earlier this week. Now it's up to 53.5. Even see some 54, 54 and a halves at the sharper leading indicator books, which once again shows you that they've been hit with the sharp money on the over. So once again, the sharp side in this game isn't the side. It's the total with the over between Ohio State and Oregon. And I think it does make sense. Um, yes, both teams have good statistical defenses, but as we've seen in a lot of these high-profile games, including that Georgia-Alabama game a couple weeks ago, the offenses usually beat the better defenses nowadays in modern college football. And we've seen that a lot also in the recent national championship games, which have all been very high-scoring on average. Um, keep in mind, Alabama-Georgia, two stout defensive units on paper, gave up over 1,000 combined yards in that game a couple weeks ago. And yes, Ohio State has shut people down. In fact, they've allowed seven or less in four of their five games this season. But that came against Akron, Western Michigan. Marshall scored 14. Michigan State struggling. Iowa had seven last week, but the Iowa Hawkeyes cannot throw the ball. They're still a really bad passing offense. So this is a huge step up in class for Ohio State and a tough tra travel spot on top of that. 
And then you've got Oregon, who's held a lot of teams in check. They've held everybody but one team to 14 or less. But that one team was Boise State, who put up 34 points back in Week 2. And Boise is an explosive offense. So I think this is a huge step up in class for both uh, defensive units and something they haven't seen so far this year. And once again, to put it in perspective, Ohio State's averaging over 7.5 yards per play. Oregon over 6.5 yards per play. Both teams have faced opponents that average only about 5.5 yards per play this season. So take a look at the over. That's where the sharp money has been in the Ohio State-Oregon game. But as far as the spread, minus 3, I think, is pretty much in line with my simulation. All right, one more game in the top 25, and then I'm going to give you a bonus game. And by the way, I do have stronger opinions on the sides in both of these games coming up. So don't worry. You're going to get some side selections as well. I'll give you a couple totals there. But the next top 25 matchup, also at 7.30 Eastern now on ABC, is number 9, Ole Miss at number 13, LSU. And uh, my simulation, pretty much in line here again with the point spread. I favor Ole Miss by two and a half, and the line has gone from two up to three, now even three and a half. But now that a lot of three and a halves are starting to show, we do get some value with the home dog, LSU. And I think the matchup is favorable as well. Three is the key number. You know, there's no question about it. When football betting, three is the gospel. It's the key number. Uh, there's about a, anywhere from an 8 to 10% chance of favorite wins by exactly three. Now, in this game, the lot, odds are a little bit less because the total is higher. It's around 64. But I still project about an 8% chance Ole Miss can win by exactly three points in this game. So now that the line has gone from three to three and a half, and I make it only two and a half, there is solid line value with LSU plus three and a half or more. And it also looks like a good scheduling setup for the Tigers at home as they're coming off a bye week. Always like playing quality home dogs with a bye week when they're playing a superior, or at least considered superior opponent, because that extra bye time, that extra prep time, that extra healing up and health time is so critical. Meanwhile, Ole Miss does not have the bye. They're coming off the South Carolina win on the road and having to travel for the second week in a row after that Kentucky loss. Now back-to-back -back road games against a rested and dangerous LSU squad, and we're getting line value now at three and a half or more. LSU put up over 660 yards of offense against South Alabama before that bye. Defense is still suspect, but it's actually improved compared to last year, and they've got plenty of firepower. So I'd like LSU here, especially at that key number of three and a half or more on Saturday night. All right, one more bonus game for you, and I'm going to get to that in just a moment. Quick reminder, if you want my official best bets, they're available each and every day at wagertalk.com. And right now, when you buy 30 days, you can add a second 30-day package for just $99.00. No promo code needed. Check that out. I was a perfect 3-0 last Saturday in college football, ranked number one this season and number one the last three years combined, college and pro football ATS profits at Wager Talk. NBA starts in a couple weeks. I'm number one all time in the NBA, including the last three years, units one, and also finished the baseball season, regular season on a 31-13 and run, and now the playoffs are here. Yeah, not a bad time to be an all-sports client. In fact, this is the only time of the year you can get baseball, football, and basketball all at once. And right now, you buy 30 days, you can add a second 30 days for just $99. That special offer is at my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's close it out with a game that was just a bit outside for making the cut. And that's not because I don't like the game. I do. I'm going to give you a free play here. But that's because USC fell from number 11 out of the rankings, but they're the first in additional votes. So they're technically number 26 this week. And they have fallen because they lost at Minnesota as a touchdown road favorite last week. But that was a tough scheduling spot. You know, I mentioned how these Big Ten road teams traveling multiple time zones continue to struggle, and this is another situation where I think it'll work in USC's favor now, as Penn State has a very difficult road trip cross-country, and this is number four Penn State at number 26 USC, 3.30 Eastern, Saturday afternoon on CBS. First of all, let's look at my simulation, 10,000 game simulation. I've got this game a pick -em. In fact, I've got Ohio uh, Penn State winning by .2, so it's a pick -em. On average, 10,000 times these teams play. Now, I do travel. I do factor in the travel situation a little bit, but not fully. Um, so I make the line a pick them. The line is currently plus five, so we get some nice line value. Uh, interesting enough, that look ahead line at the Circa that I've been talking about was five as well this summer. Uh, so it's pretty much where it should be uh, based on the look ahead line, even though USC coming off a bad loss. Uh, but what's more of an indication of how much the line has changed is what the line was, the bettable line was last, last week, last Wednesday at DraftKings before the games were played, and it was three. Um, so this line has gone up a bit now from three up to five. And I do think we obviously get some value as I make it a pick them. And I like the situational setup, as I mentioned. Penn State has played a road game, barely. It was at West Virginia back on August 31st. They haven't traveled in over a month. So this is a very difficult scheduling spot for that reason alone. And I do think USC is a little bit better uh, than their overall 3-2 and two record indicates. Now, that loss last week in Minnesota probably knocks them out of national title contention. 
Um, and of course, they had that near miss against Michigan as well, which is on surface not going to be a good loss either, probably. So two road favorite losses really hurt this team. And normally you would worry about a flat spot, a letdown the following week. But the fact that they're facing the number four team in the nation at home, I think, prevents that this week. You know, uh, next week at Maryland, whew, talk about another tough scheduling spot, <laughs> traveling cross country to Maryland. That could be the flat spot for USC. So pencil that in. We'll take a closer look after I have my proprietary model simulate that game next week. But for this week, I do think it's a focus spot for USC. Even after the second loss, we get some line value. And while the defense is still suspect, they are improved this year, just like I said about LSU. And they are more than capable of trading points with, uh, with Penn State. And one thing about the Nittany Lions under Franklin is that they beat up on bad teams. They're a bully, and they always cover those big spreads for the most part. But they do sometimes have trouble when stepping up in class. And although they're technically a favorite here, I make the game a pick so I think this is an even matchup, and I think they're going to have trouble stepping up in class. You know, I mentioned the only road game was at West Virginia. Since then, they've played Bowling Green and Kent State at home. Illinois was a tough matchup, and then UCLA, who's terrible offensively. Uh, USC, a much better offensive team, and I think they've got enough to pull. What will be considered an upset because they're an underdog and ranked lower, uh, but it would not be an upset to me. So take a look at USC at plus five. I think that's a nice setup here in that game on Saturday afternoon. All right, those are your four biggest college football games this weekend. Your top 26 matchups, as I dug a little deeper for you, as I always try to do. Hey, if you're finding this information useful, do me a couple quick favors. First of all, Hit the, hit the like button. The thumbs up button takes one second. Boom. You did it. If all of you do that, I'll do even more videos because that's why I do this because you watch and because you comment below. Let me know if you're finding these videos useful, this top 25 video. And of course, my NFL Fade the Public video will be up on Saturday here on the channel as well. Yet another reason when you click subscribe here on Wager Talk TV to click that bell as well so you get instant alerts. When these big videos go up, top 25, fade the public. But don't forget about all the multiple free play videos I did this week for all the college and pro football games and even some baseball games as well. And the NBA is right around the corner. As I mentioned, this is a great time of the year. Not only to subscribe and click that bell here on Wager Talk TV, but also to check out my personal best bets at wagertalk.com. Because right now you buy one month, you can add a second month for just $99. That offer expires after this weekend. Now, two months is a good starter, right? But if you're serious about taking a real investment consistent approach, the one-year all-access is the way to go. I know so many of you have gotten on board the last few weeks since I first brought this promo code to your attention, but some of you have sat back and watched winter after winter to continue to pass you by, including a 3-0 sweep last Saturday in college football. In fact, we were close to a 6-0 sweep. We went 4-2 and last weekend overall in all sports. The two losses were on the final play of two NFL games. Otherwise, we're 6-0. and So even the misses have been close. We have just really are seeing it well. In fact, after the first week of October, we are now up over 150 units of profit this calendar year alone, just nine plus months in, in all sports, football, baseball, and basketball. And when you use promo code SM365, you can add a full one-year package for just over $3 a day, just over a dollar a play. It's an instant $800 discount with promo code SM365 on my one-year all-access. Now, you don't have to memorize the special offers or the promo codes. I list them every day on my page with details. Take your time. Go there. Figure out which package works best for you. You can check out to see what best bets I have every day. You can also look down at the bottom and see the last 20 games recapped on a rolling basis with analysis so you can learn and earn as you decide which package to get. And also, don't forget about the free plays. I do post multiple free plays throughout the week on my page as well. So check all that out and get on board one of these All Sports All Access because October and November, the only time of year you can get baseball, football, and basketball, college and pro all going at the same time. Red Hot, and it will continue. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on social media on X and Instagram at Steve Merrill. Two R's, one L. You know the deal. At Steve Merrill. Two R's, one L. At Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free content coming up next.